Hello, my name is Gary Machida and welcome to our continuing video series called Is the Deuterocanon Scripture? In our last episode, we looked at how the Apostle Matthew recounted the words of the chief priests, scribes, and elders in Matthew 27 and how their words were based on the second chapter of the Book of Wisdom. In this episode, we're going to look at another text in the Epistle to Hebrews, chapter 1135. As with our previous episode, we will use as our guide the cross-references found in some of the earliest editions of the English Protestant Bible. This episode, we're going to investigate the presence of the Maccabean martyrs within the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Many Christians may already be familiar with the 11th chapter of Hebrews. It is the great faith chapter, where Hebrews recounts all the saints and the exploits of those of old who by supernatural faith persevered in obedience to God. It's interesting that three times in the 11th chapter, the inspired author explicitly states that the people mentioned in it were testified to and approved. For example, in Hebrews 11.3, the text says, because of it, that's because of the ancients' faith, the ancients were well attested. In verse 5, it says that he, Enoch, was taken up and he is attested to have pleased God. Likewise, in Hebrews 11.39, it reads, Yet all of these, though approved, because of their faith. It's clear from these three citations that the author of Hebrews 11, that all the saints mentioned in this chapter are attested to somewhere, but where? When we look at the names of the saints that are mentioned and their descriptions, we find something very interesting. All of these characters are taken from the pages of sacred scripture. In fact, if you look closely at this list, you'll notice that they're listed in Hebrews 11 in a near chronological order, beginning with the book of Genesis, with creation and Abel and Enoch, through to David and Elijah and onwards. What's fascinating is what is said in Hebrews 11.35. The verse reads, Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured not accepting release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. Now clearly the women who received back the dead is referring to the exploits of the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Who then are these people who were tortured and would not accept release so that they might obtain a better resurrection? If you look throughout the whole of the Protestant Old Testament, you will not find a single reference to anyone either an individual or group of individuals, who fulfills all three things that are said in verse 35. For example, you would not find anyone in the Protestant Old Testament who was tortured, refused to be released, explicitly for the sake of a better resurrection. Indeed, even if you go to extra-biblical material, uh, Jewish pseudepigraphical material, or even Christian pseudepigraphical material, you will not find any character found in the Protestant Old Testament that fulfills all three of these. However, you will find this in the second book of Maccabees. The Maccabean martyrs fulfills all three conditions. The Maccabean martyrs were tortured and they refused release. All this is said in at least two instances explicitly because of their faith in the resurrection. Not only does this identification fit perfectly with the description of Hebrews 11.35, but there is also a linguistic point of contact as well. For example, the word that's translated as torture, tampanzo, is never used in the Greek Bible, the Septuagint, for torture, except for two verses, both of which are found in 2 Maccabees, and both of which are in the context of the Maccabean martyrs mentioned above. Indeed, also in the following verse, Hebrews 11.36, the author of Hebrews mentions 
cruel mockings. Again, these words fit 2 Maccabees 7, verse 7. Now, as we said in previous episodes, the presence or absence of a quote in and of itself does not equal approval. And the same is true here. The presence of reference to 2 Maccabees in and of itself does not demonstrate that it was accepted as a sacred text. However, the reference to the Maccabean martyrs within the context of chapter 11 speaks volumes in regards to how the inspired author understood 2 Maccabees. Now, remember, the purpose of the whole chapter, Hebrews 11, is to remind the Jewish Christians who were the original readers of this text about the ancients who had supernatural faith that were, quote, well attested, unquote, or were testified of or approved. We note that they were approved in sacred scripture. In fact, the listing of the saints clearly comes from scripture. It's a near chronological recounting from Genesis onwards of all the people who had supernatural faith. Since the author of Hebrews includes the martyrs in 2 Maccabees, wouldn't it follow that the Bible that the author of Hebrews was using started in Genesis and ended with, you guessed it, 2 Maccabees? Consider this also. If this is a reference to 2 Maccabees, and indeed it is, then we're faced with one of two possibilities. Either the author believed that 2 Maccabees was an authentic member of sacred scripture and worthy of being brought forward as an example of supernatural faith, or the author of Hebrews knowingly introduced a character which is nowhere found anywhere in the scriptures. Because as we mentioned before, even if you look at the Protestant Old Testament, you don't find anyone to fit the description. And even if you go to extra biblical material, to find any description of any biblical character found only in the Protestant Bible, you will not find a match. It's only in the Deuterocanonical book of 2 Maccabees. Therefore, the evidence on how the inspired author of Hebrews 11 used 2 Maccabees shows us that his Bible began with Genesis and his Old Testament concluded with 2 Maccabees. In our next episode, we'll look at another instance of the New Testament using a deuterocanonical book as a sacred text. My name is Gary Machuda, and thank you for watching.